Hello, this is Nitin Dahad with the E-Times. And I'm here in uh, Sand Hill Road today, Sand Hill Road. And I'm talking to a company that's just come out of stealth after four years. Uh, the company's called Retime, and I'm talking to the co-founder co and CEO, Sachin Gandhi. Sachin, hello. Hi, Nitin. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Doing great. Um, so, uh, Retime, you're here, like you're, you've been doing for four years. Just tell us a little bit about the, the, the company uh, and your journey so far. Sure. Uh, love to. Uh, Retime is a AI infrastructure and a cloud connectivity company. We are building next generation coherent DSP chips mm. for AI data center connectivity. Uh, as you mentioned, we've been in business for four years and we are just coming out of launch. Uh, and uh, yeah, we've been supported by our top tiers of investors and uh, we have raised so far over $180 million. Yes, uh, I mean, that's, uh, that's quite impressive. Um, now, what's the product? What are, what are you doing? And what's the, the market uh, pain point you're addressing? Right. So, we are developing, as I mentioned, a next generation optical communication DSP chips. Now, if you look at the AI infrastructure today, the GPUs, the number of amount of GPUs are required to manage your AI workloads is exponentially increasing. Now, this is how the AI data center looks like. If you So you have these GPUs right in the middle of the infrastructure, either with hundreds of GPUs together or millions of GPUs. They're either connected to a backend network, mm -hmm. which is within the rack, or connected to a front-end network between the rack, or a DCI, data center interconnects, which is between the data centers. We all agree that we require millions of GPUs to manage the current workloads. But what you may or may not know is that each of these GPU requires 10 to 12 optical ports. Okay. And for the connectivity, today, the high data rate is a big bottleneck in AI infrastructure. You so mean lack of high data rate or? Lack of high data rate, the okay. moment of data rate, right? Okay. So, we, so to support that, the speeds are increasing. Mm. Connectivity is very must. That's one of the one of the main problems we are trying to address, higher speed. The second thing is that boundary between inter and intra data center is kind of blurring. What I mean is that with this explosion of these workloads, AI workloads, the data center is moving into a distributed architecture. Yeah. In common terms, it means the data center is going beyond the physical buildings. Okay. That means you require longer distance. And when you require a longer distance, you require coherent technology and not PAM4. PAM4 may not scale. So that's what we are doing. As a retime, we are building a coherent DSP chips mm. to support this AI infrastructure connectivity problems, what we are seeing today. This other thing is that when, as the speed distance increases for sure we need coherent but as the speed increases there's a physics we may hit the limit of physics shannon limits yeah. and maybe we're not able to spam for we're not able to scale okay so even for a smaller distance like say one kilometer onwards we might need a coherent so what we are addressing is the communication optical communication between the data center and within the data center with our with our product and what why should anybody come to you rather than the incumbents? I mean, what, what's your USP? What's right. your differentiation? Right. So when you look at the DSP ASICs, the thing that sells is price and power. Mm. The power is extremely important. Mm. We have done a lot of innovation on the analog side, and we believe because of that innovation, what we have done, we have filed a lot of patents over there. We will think that we will be able to give the best power in the industry. The second thing is I mentioned about price. Well, when you look at this market, this market has been served by one big player. Mm. And the big player also builds other components of the, of the ecosystems. So there is a need of a neutral DSP vendor. We as a retime, we want to focus only on the semiconductor. We only want to focus on the DSP ASICs. And as a result, we think that we do provide a neutrality in the industry. Mm. 
competitiveness in the industry, to be fair, along the entire ecosystem. And that neutrality, um, so that allows you to go to whether it's, uh, so your go-to-market is like, it could be the opt optical module, it could be um, uh, OEM, or it could be uh, the hyperscaler. So my end customers are a hyperscaler and OEM, Okay. right? But we have to be part of the complete ecosystem. Yeah. So of course, they are the influencer, they will be the decision maker, we will, part, we will, we will be selling our chips with the, to the optical module vendor, mm -hmm. along with other ecosystem partners, and at the end of it, we'll be serving it to the hyperscaler and OEMs. Okay, and um, so in, in terms of um, where you are in terms of traction, uh, you've been going for four years uh, behind the scenes in stealth. Where are you now? Uh, why are you coming out of stealth now? Right, so yeah, it's been a great journey so far for the last four years. Yeah. And uh, in that four years, you know, we build the team, we, we build the product. So today, our chip is in the lab. We are sampling as we speak. So we thought, and we did close the Series D round recently. So we thought it was the right time for us mm. to come out of the stealth mode, as we will be launching our product soon enough. By the end of by the end of this year, we'll be launching our products. So thought this was the right time. In these four years, as I mentioned, building team, building the product, we also had a lot of interaction with our ecosystem partners, module vendors, customers. We closed one module vendor. We have a we have a, we have closed one customer, so that's that's what we've been doing from last four years, and we did show that demonstrate whatever the capability we have verified so far of our chip to the external world, to our customers, to our partners, and we have, and our product is been resonating with the market. It seems like market really will love to have the product whenever it's ready. Mm. So definitely there is attraction in the market among the optical module vendors and among the hyperscalers and, and OEM you're partners. You're not able to name those yet, I guess. Not yet, I guess we will have a product launch soon. Okay. And you know, we just come out of the company launch. We just come out of the stealth. Uh, I'll tell your audience to wait for, for another few months and we'll come up with our product launch and we'll come up with all the all the names. Okay, what's your background? Why, how, how, how come you've decided to do this company? Uh, I guess you have some background in this, in this industry which makes people want to listen to you. Uh, for sure. I mean, you know, I am from double E background. I've done my master's in electrical engineering from Florida. I worked in companies like Cisco and Marvel for around 10, 15 years uh, doing ASIC design, ASIC verification. So yes, my background is semiconductor. That's what I've been doing all my life. And after Marvel, I started up. So I quit Marvel and started a company called Explant, mm. which was a uh, 3.2 terabit switch company. I know today we are talking about 100 terabits and yeah. and so on. We have Tomahawk 5 coming in. Uh, we used to compete with Tomahawk 1 okay. at that time. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, this was a switch company. Um, and this was a time frame we we're looking at like 2011, 2012, when it was yeah. difficult for semiconductor to get funding. Yeah. But we were able to get funding, we were able to develop the product and we had a successful exit with Cavium. And uh, after that, I worked in Cavium as a marketing, head of marketing, brought the Explant product to the market. Uh, and after that, you know, Cavium was getting acquired by Marvel. I, I didn't continue with Marvel and I joined, I started another startup called Drive, which was a automotive FI, uh, secured FI startup. Okay. Uh, that we ran for a year and we got acquired by Synaptics. Okay. And after Synaptics, I started Retime. Uh, so when I when I when my company got acquired by Synaptics, I was looking at the what's next for me, mm. right? And I found that connectivity and infrastructure there is a play. Mm. And the reason is that yes, we have these big chips coming up, moving data, like you know, processing very high high, high speed data and everything. But the end of it, data needs to move from point A to point B, right? So connectivity will never go away. But there's a net mean. So that with that thought in process, I wanted to do something in infrastructure connected to space. And I was looking for, a, for an area in which I can make a difference. Mm. And I thought I found my spot. And where does silicon photonics fit this is? Because we've heard a lot of, around silicon photonics lately. Right, so I mean, at the end of it, my chip goes in the optical module. Okay. If you open up the optical module, the silicon photonics part, there's another semiconductor part either integrated with silicon photonics or outside like TRs and drivers and there's a DSP chips. Okay. So that's how the optical module looks like. You have semiconductor components and optics components 
and yeah, I, I play in that ecosystem. And um, so, like you're what, uh, how many people are you now? 80 plus. Okay, and across like uh, the globe, I guess. Right, we have uh, four offices, Silicon Valley, Austin, Tel Aviv and Armenia. Okay, uh, Armenia is very strong. I've heard a lot uh, over the last few weeks about Armenia. Right, I mean, you get a very good talent, especially in analog and uh, backend. Okay. Uh, VLSI backend design, we, we can get very good talent from, okay. from Armenia. Yeah, that's just curiosity. Um, so, um, what's next? Um, yeah, you're coming out of stealth, you, know, you ra raise your Series D, 180 million uh, total. Uh, so, what's next? Uh, what should customers expect from you? Right, uh, you know, with the, with the Series D money we got, our plan is to get into production. Yeah. So, as fast as possible and then develop our commercial team and go to the market so, and start generating the revenue. So that's our plan with our Series D. As I said, we already have a one customer pipeline and our goal is to get more and more customer and more and more module vendors uh, as we come out of our stealth and we announce our products. Now, I mean, there's a key in, uh, incumbent in the market. What are your challenges in addressing maybe inertia in the market in terms of moving from from existing sort of suppliers? Well, I mean, uh, as you men mentioned, <laughs> incumbent in the market, right? So when you have a, a monopoly in the market, I think it's a little bit easier. People mm. say it's tough, but I think it's a little bit easier okay. because you don't have to take a bigger percentage mm. of the market share to become profitable. Yeah. You have to take a little bit percentage from one big guy to become profitable. So that helps. And the second thing, as I mentioned, right, price and power. And I think we can definitely challenge them in power mm. and price too. Uh, and, and I keep mentioning about neutral DSP vendor. Yeah. And that's what it is, right? When you say neutral DSP vendor, it's like, okay, yes, I'm providing only, I mean, my, my focus is only on semiconductors. But at the same time, we can do a custom stuff which probably against the generalized, generalized stuff which the incumbent will provide. We can definitely be a more closer to the customers, provide them what exact features they want. At the same time, we can also open up the entire ecosystem. Customer can have a right or a choice to choose what semiconductor components they want, what silicon photonics they want, what DSP chips they want. So I think with all this thing in the mind, I guess we will we will able to challenge the incumbent. Okay. and uh, like. What are, what's your ex expectations from investors? An exit soon or like in the next couple of years? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, my job is to execute. Okay. All right, investors have given me money, they've put so, shown faith in me. Yeah. My job is to hit my milestones, yeah. get the product out, get the revenue going. I think if I do all those stuff, there could be an exit, there could be an IPO. Okay. So, okay. yeah, let's see. Let's, let's wait and watch. Well, Sachin, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nitin. Thank you for your time. Thanks.